Oh my god. Just saying. Best girl. She on? Hell yeah. There's a wrecked car ahead. White smoke is still visible, so the accident must have just happened. Kasai slows down. What is it? Wow, oh my gosh! Hey, isn't that the manager? The car stops. The sound of the brakes startles Irie, and he falls on his butt. It's obvious that Irie is the one who is in the accident. Hey, manager! Is that your car? Sh Shionsen. Are you okay, Dr. Irie? Kasai, we need your fucking help right now. You should go see a doctor. We'll take the manager to the clinic so he can treat himself, huh? <laughs> can you stand up? I'll take you to the clinic. No, not the clinic. I can't go there. I have to go to the Sonozaki residence. Oh, manager? Manager! What's going on? This isn't good. Kasai looks at Irie's car, then looks at the area. Then he whispers to Shion. Shion san, he must be in some kind of trouble. What's going on? There are some bullet holes in Dr. Irie's car. And they don't seem to be from an ordinary handgun. Really? You take that in. Let's take him to the main house. She gets serious. The two of them load Irie in the, Irie in the back seat, get in the car, and leave in a hurry. We have to ask the manager what's going on. He can't go back to the clinic. I wonder what he means. It sounds like he was sounds like he was running away from someone in the clinic, but I don't know. It's obvious that he was in some kind of trouble. Hey, where are you going? Shion is confused because Kas Kasai makes a wrong turn. Dr. Irie's pursuers aim from the tire of his car. They want to capture him alive. Maybe his pursuers were close by. Are they after us? There's no car behind us and nothing in the air. In this area, it's impossible to follow unless they are right behind us. I'm going to make another left turn just to be safe and then head to the main house. Could you watch what happens behind us? Okay. Do you have guns on you? Scaring the HQ. The target was picked up by a civilian vehicle. I'm setting the license plate number and the car model. Roger. Aguizu, your target is the civilian vehicle now. Search immediately. Try to capture Dr. Director Irie alive. Neutralize the civilians as well, dead or alive. You done fucked up now. Now you're going against this, the fucking Yakuza. And the Sonozaki family. Don't worry. There's a device to dispatch a signal in the director's code. Oh. Nguisu's vehicle can catch the signal and they can pinpoint where he is. Iria is lying on the back seat wearing his white coat. There's a device on his collar. The security department put it there just in case. So no matter how hard Xion tries to look for a shadow, the enemy already has them. Nguisu 3, we found the vehicle. We just made a turn by the water mill. There's a map of Hinamizawa on the table in the security room. The path by the watermill leads to a private property. It belongs to the Sonozaki family, and the Sonozaki residence is the only building on the property. Major! <laughs> oh my, there's no way out. This is Otori 1. Uguisu, don't go in yet. Otori will join you in a little bit. We'll go in together. Uguisu 1, Roger. Okonogi, don't give them any time. Why don't you let Uguisu go in? We're experiencing a bad connection. Oh, <laughs> Okonogi making static noises. Huh. Nobody listens to me. The Sonozaki family's basement has a security system. That's the first I've heard of this. And it shows the images from the various security cameras on the property. Of course it's not as, as high-tech as the one at, at the Irie Institution. The monitor sits in a small closet of a small Japanese-style room. It almost looks like a secret room. There's electricity and a phone, and although it's a basement, it has all the base functions of the Sonozaki residence. First, all the club members watched the monitor curiously, but after a while it got too hot in this tiny room. Mion and Rena stayed behind in the room and observed the monitor. Michan, look! There's a car! That's Kasai-san's car. It's probably Shion. I bet she came because the festival is today. Gosh, why'd she have to come today? We don't have time for her. Her grandmother has been at the shrine since this morning. So there's nobody upstairs. If Mion doesn't answer the door, Shion will think nobody is home. You'd better have time for her. She is involved now, whether you like it or not, Mion. Mion wonders if she should, she should tell Shion what's going on. 
She can be helpful. Hmm. Kasai's car stopped in front of the gate, and someone is getting out of the car. Hey! Michan, isn't that the manager? What? They see Xion and Kasai holding Ibe on the monitor. Obviously something serious happened. Let's go! Rena and Keichan, come with us! Sadako, observe the monitor! Rika-chan, don't come up! Hanyu, make sure Rika-chan doesn't move! Okay, I've got it! Me? That's not fair! <laughs> Maybe Okanogi made the right decision. <clears throat> if he had let Ugrisu go in as Takano had ordered, he would have been on the monitor. But Okanogi ordered them to wait until another unit arrived, so they waited. That's why Mion didn't notice the enemy is about to attack. By this time, there are many mountain hound vehicles by the water mill. Okunogi Otori-1 has joined Okisu, and they're getting ready to go in. It was a good idea to leave Sadago to observe the monitor. Also, if they hadn't come out, Irie would have been killed. Mian doesn't know it yet, but Irie is their only hope of rescuing Tomitake. So as a result, they did everything correctly. S-Sis! Sis! Hmm, I wonder if she's already gone to the shrine. Shihan! Where did you come from? Ah, oh, you were in the basement, weren't you? I'll tell Grandma you were down there playing. Who cares about that? How is the manager? Manager! Is he alive? Huh? Are you all in trouble, too? What's going on? Shichan, listen well. It's like this. Manager, what happened? Oh, sorry. The mountain hounds got Tomitake-san. He's in the clinic's basement. I had an accident while they were chasing me. Irie explains everything while enduring the pain. And everyone is happy that he's okay, but Mion's face clouds over. She asks Xion, Is anyone after you? Nobody was following us. Come on, let's go in. It doesn't look good. They hear a sound of a car approaching. And it's not only one. Who could it be at this time of the day? It's a waste of time to even think that. Idiot! They are after you, Xion! I'm telling you, nobody was following us! Kasai picks up both sisters and runs through the gate. Go, Kasai! Let's go to the basement. It'll be safe there. mian -san, There's a lot of strange cars coming! I know! Go back to the basement! I'll shut the door. Where's Rika-chan? She went from into the secret room with Hanyu-san. Ogrisu-6, we found the target. We see some of Aura's friends, too. <laughs> Aura's hiding there, I know. Right. Right, Jiro-san? Tomitake is on the floor of the security room. His hands and legs are cuffed, and there's another pair of handcuffs to connect them. So he's bent backwards on the floor, kinky. He can't get up or even turn around. Takano laughs and post pokes Tomitake's side with the toe of her shoe. What happened after the call that Tomitake couldn't answer? Mountain hands climb over the fence easily. There's no need to explain at this point. It's obvious that they are the enemy, and that they are the mountain hounds that Rika-chan has talked about many times. They go through the grove of trees and head to the entrance of the underground shrine storage. The first five of the mountain hounds were supposed to capture them all, but they all fall down, one after another. <gasps> Traps! Just as another one of the mountain hounds starts to wonder why they fell, he feels something on his leg. The next moment, his body flies through the air! SHIT! As he stands up, his leg gets pulled again. He realizes there's a rope wrapped around his leg. Because the way he fell, the rope is wrapped tightly and won't, it won't come off easily. Be careful! There are traps in the bushes. Sadako set up lots of traps in the bushes. Good girl, Sadako. Sadako wouldn't just sit around all day on this empty property. The club members go into the underground shrine storage, one after another. Mountain hounds can't do anything, although they see them. I'm closing the door! Come on, help me! Here we go! There's a heavy door, but when they put their power together, it closes easily. We unlocks the door quickly, putting on the deadbolt, too. Do you think this will be enough? Don't you think they'll break this door? This door? I saw five or six. No, maybe more cars on the monitor. They're all vans, and I saw strange men in them. I don't think this door will be broken that easily, but they are used to stuff like this. We shouldn't underestimate them. Before he can finish his sentence, someone pounds on the door. The second batch of the Mountain Hounds are here. Although this heavy door separates them, it's not comforting at all to know that the enemy is on the other side. I'm sorry. It's my fault. You haven't done anything wrong. Let's go farther in. Yeah, let's find out how many there are on, there are on the monitor. 
Okay, fine. Just leave me out of this. I'm just an outcast. <laughs> Damn it! I'll explain when I have five minutes to spare! When there's not men trying to kill us! Agusu one to Otori one. The targets are in the basement. There's a steel door and it can't break through. Otori one, Roger. Shit, this Tomozaki family must be so rich. The property is too huge for us to surround, so we won't even try. Let's join Agusu. Agusu, knock some trees down. We we'll use them to ram down the door. Oh, grow a goody. Good, that's good to know that you don't have, like, explosives. Or 27 to 21. We have some... Oh, never mind. <laughs> you do have explosives. We have some plastic explosives for indoor use. Do you want us to get them ready? Plastic explosives are explosives for military use. There are various types, but he's talking about the ones specifically made to break doors. Okanogi thinks it's a good idea at first, but then he changes his mind right away. This is a small village. If there was an explosion, everyone would hear. It's daytime, and they're on the surface. This is the worst time and place for the mountain hounds to do their job. An explosion isn't a good idea. Hmm? Wait a minute. What time is it now? It's almost 10 a.m. I got it. Otori 7, we'll do it. Get the fuse ready. Oh, shit. Huh? Commander, what does 10 a.m. have anything to do with an explosion? Okanogi's mind is working sharper than ever. He is sure this will work. Everyone gathers in the secret room. Is everyone okay? Oh, oh, we were watching the monitor. There are about 30 guys out there. That many? Shit. Can I see? Look, they don't know what to do. When Mion touches a switch, the screen shows the view of the entrance to the basement. Some of the mountain hounds are checking out the door. They don't appear to be trying to force open the door. They're simply at a loss for what to do. What are they going to do? They think we're stuck in here, so I'm sure they're going to break open the door. What the heck? What are they doing with a log? They must be thinking of using it to break the break the door. Sadako just said we're stuck in here. Then we should try to get out of here while they're trying to open the door. I agree with her. Besides, we have to rescue Tomitaki-san. You're right. No matter how strong the door is, we'll be in big trouble if they find us. I think it's time for us to escape. Sis, don't you think we should call the police? Yeah. I completely forgot about that. Even if a spy at the police station hears us, there really isn't much he can do at this point anyway. I'm sure uishi san will come right over. Bring the fucking... the fucking military. Leon picks up the phone. Why didn't you think about this earlier? Hmm? What? They cut the phone lines. What's the matter? Leon panics as she tries to listen to a dial tone. The phone? What's going on? I don't hear anything. They must have cut the wire. Wow! Suddenly they're in the dark. What? Is this a power failure? Kasai lights a cigarette lighter. Leon turns the emergency flashlight on. Oh boy. This is what's bad about a basement. But the enemies are in the dark too, right? I know, but they might have some kind of a device to be able to see in the dark. Don't you think so? Mian san what do you think they cut the electricity? Are we just going on the offensive? If nothing else is to turn the security system off. They were checking out the door. They didn't give up. They have a way to destroy the door, and they don't want us to notice it. That's why they cut the electricity. Are they gonna blow up the door? The door will be destroyed in a second, so we can't stay here, right? Mi-chan! Let's get out of here! Show us the way to the hidden well escape route! This way, everyone. Mion becomes confused with this chaos. She didn't underestimate the mountain hounds. She even considered that they would have some explosives. But she didn't think that they would use it in Hinamizawa during the day. Somebody will hear the explosion. Is there such a thing as a silent explosive? They must be crazy! They don't care about a little danger. This is a crazy situation. But the mountain hounds are always very careful. I don't know about Takana-san, but there's no way Okunogi-san would allow an explosion during the day. Unless he had a plan. Yet they're still gonna do it, huh? Very well. I don't know about explosives, but just like a silencer on a gun, isn't there a silent explosive? No way. They all make similar sounds when they explode. Oh, I get it. You're a staff member for Wadanagashi, aren't you, manager? What time do they let people know if the festival's gonna take place? I'm pretty sure it's at 10 a.m. Ah. 
Oh, 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 oh! Do you think? Just like on a track and field day? If you want to hide a tree, hide it in the forest, huh? Rika knows Okanogi well. He always complains that he has to guard Rika like she's a princess. Rika never expected Okanogi to be so sharp. That's why Rika is more mortified than anyone else. Mountain Hound set explosives on the door to the basement quickly. Long wires are connected to the explosives, and the Mountain Hounds are waiting at the other end, lying flat on the ground. One of the members holds a detonation switch. All the wires gather at the switch. It's almost 10 a.m. <laughs> this morning I thought it was bad luck this happened on the day of Wadden Nagashi. But now I'm glad this happened today. Okidoki realizes that he can use this festival day effectively himself. He's going to make sure his enemies get what they deserve. On the morning of a village event, people use fireworks to let villagers know an event is going to take place that day. This method is often used for track and field days. Since Wadonagashi starts in the evening, fireworks go up at 10 a.m. That's when the fireworks go up and make loud noises. Since Hidamizawa is located in a ravine, the sound echoes and it's hard to figure out where the sound is coming from. That is an advantage for the mountain hounds. Now! A loud noise and a shock shake the ground like an earthquake. The explosion must have warped supporting beams everywhere. There's a discomforting squeaky sound and the dust falls from the ceiling. It was powerful. The explosion must have blown the door. The explosion took place without anyone noticing it. Come on! This way! Mion leads everyone out into one of the rocky caves. There's a well-hidden vertical tunnel here. It's called a hidden well. It, the well-hidden hidden well. But it's actually a very eerie vertical tunnel. They don't have enough flashlights for everyone. So there's no way for them to see the entirety of this eerie vertical tunnel. Are you telling us to go down there? How far does this go? There's a horizontal tunnel after 30 meters. Don't be like me and... Don't be like Xion and fall. We can get to the well in the mountains through the tunnel. Okay, and why don't you go first, sis? You know the way around here better than anyone here. Huh? Do I have to? Who else? Kasai and I will be the real guard, rear guards. Come on, hurry up. Okay. Mion was going to take the rear end. But Mion and Xion know instinctively. Because there are many of them, the rear end may not make it, make it in time. Like the iron door at the entrance, once the enemies are in, all they have to do is go through the inner doors, and they are easily breakable. The route is basically a straight line. They probably won't get lost getting here. That's why Xion took the rear, rear guard job before Mion took it. No more pussy. That's because she really is. She is really the older sister. Xion wants to protect protect her younger sister, who is playing the older sister in this real emergency. Mion knows what Xion is thinking instinctively. Mion understands the relationship between her sister and herself. Mion isn't the only one who feels guilty for taking the older sister's position. Xion also feels guilty for making Mion take responsibility as leader of the family. And finally, here is a chance for atonement for Xion. That's interesting. mion son, do you have the key to the armory? This is the time to open it. Mion throws over the key silently. Kasai and Xion take the key and run deep into the rock tunnel. Listen, everyone. It's about 30 meters to the horizontal tunnel. If you fall, that's it for you. It's dark, so be very careful as you go down. If you're the ones waiting, make sure to light the way for the others, okay? I think only one or two can go down at the same time. I'll go first. Come on, give me some light. Mion, son, be careful. The ones using the flashlights, be careful, too. If the lights were on, they could have gone down quickly. There are actually a few light bulbs inside of the well. Of course, Mion already checked them. It is now certain that the enemy has cut the electricity to the basement. It is extremely dangerous to go down this tunnel with just a little light from the flashlights. As one goes down, there have to be people lighting up the way. Mion is right. She realizes as she goes down herself that it is almost impossible to go down this ladder without the weak light from the flashlights. The lights don't reach all the way down. In the darkness, her feet suddenly become unsteady. Every step she takes makes her more nervous. It's about 30 meters to the horizontal tunnel. That's deep enough. 
But the hidden well is deeper than that. <clears throat> if she falls by accident, she won't just injure herself. Hasn't it been 30 meters yet? She can't even remember exactly how long 30 meters are. Has she missed the tunnel already? That's when she feels a cool breeze on her body. She senses a huge hole, so she takes out a flashlight to light the surrounding area. She sees a black horizontal tunnel. Okay, here I go. Ha! 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 Okay! Okay! I found the tunnel. Rika-chan, come down. Mion lights up the way from below. Okay, you're next, Rika-chan. Manager, you go next, then Hanyu, then Sadako, okay? Let's move. Irde wanted to say he would go last, but Rena gave the order first. They can't get into the basement of the clinic without Irde. Without him, they can't rescue Tomitaki. Their lives are all equally important. At least for now, he is the second most important after Rika. Please be careful. I'll light your way. Okay. Come on, everyone. Hurry up. Ah! Rika! Rika is much shorter than Mion. Rika can't go down the ladder as easily as Mion. Her legs are too short and her left foot slipped. I'm okay. Bummer. I don't want a life that I can't even ever grow out of. I'll pass June of the 58th year of the Showa era. And I will grow taller. My boobs will get bigger. <laughs> okay, Rika. I won't stay like this. Though she has been living for over 100 years, she is afraid of heights. As she fights for the fear, she tries to climb down as quickly as possible. After a while, the light from the top doesn't reach anymore, and Mion's light from below lights her way. Mion's light is enough. The next person can come down now. I'm okay! Next person can come down! Okay. Manager, you're next! You're a grown man, so go down quickly. Okay. I'll go next. Good man, EDA. Go, go, go! Mountain hounds move forward carefully, wearing the special goggles they can see in the dark. The first guy notices Sadako's trap and stops the rest of the men. Guisu 7 to Guisu 1. Just found a wire trap. Be careful coming in. Guisu 1, Roger. Utori 1, there are more traps. Why don't we turn the lights back on? Idiot, it only helped them escape more easily. We must be having problems trying to escape in this darkness. We have to give them as much trouble as possible. Corner them in this darkness and we'll get them. This is a huge trench. There must be a different way out. They won't try to hide, so they will try to escape from there. Give the assault unit some firearms, bulletproof shields, and grenades. The Sonazaki family are basically gangsters. It's, like very, it's very likely they may, may even have some smuggled handguns. That means we have to be extremely careful with those wire traps, too. We don't want to end like the thou end with thousands of lead pills in you. Roger. Sadako's traps are effective only because those guys are professionals. Ooh. Sadako assumed any professionals would misinterpret her traps as more dangerous ones. That's why she ran wires everywhere. <clears throat> Sadako was right. Although the mountain hounds were successful at breaking the iron door, they haven't even reached the torture room. The huge cave with a hidden well is on the other side of the room, door to the torture room, rather. Just a matter of time before the enemy to get to the torture room. Okay, Rana, you're next. Yeah! You come down in a hurry, too, Keiichi-kun. Keichan, how is it up there? Ren is coming down right now. She's moving right along. Okay, don't fall. The rumor says all the people who opposed the Sonozaki family were dumped into this well. It's a bottomless well. What? Shion, what the heck do you have in your hands? She comes back with a big machine gun in her hands. <laughs> what is it? It's one of those machine guns in the war movies. Its characteristic is that the magazine is bent forward. What's the name of it? Kasai has one in, in his hands, too. Okay. Oh, boy. They appear to be used, used to handling machine guns. It almost doesn't look real. In this dim environment, it is a very realistic world. Keiji feels he doesn't belong here, since he doesn't even know how to use a gun. Shinan and Kasai hide in the rock cave on both sides so they can see the entrance to the torture room. Not only Kasai, but Shion also seems to be used to doing things like this. Shion, I'll do that. So why don't you go down next? Nice try, Keiichi. Thank you for your manly pride, Keichan. But it'd be much quicker if you went down swiftly. Then if I had to explain about this Kalashnikov. Don't worry. A pretty girl like me won't die. As Shion winks at Keiichi, they hear a door being knocked down. Suddenly, Shion and Kasai look serious, and they point their guns by hiding in behind the rocks. 
The enemies are in the torture room now. There's a flashlight next to the door to the torture room. Kasai put it there. The enemies seem to be able to see in this darkness, but not us. Kasai came up with the idea on an impulse. <clears throat> the footsteps of the mountain hounds are coming closer. They're in the torture room. That means that the door is the only thing separating them and their enemies. Keichi-kun, hurry! Shion, you go first! Keichi, just go! Shion said. If something happens to you and I live, my sister will never forgive me for that. I don't have my loved ones anymore. But Sis does. Huh? What are you talking about, now of all times? I don't plan to die, but please tell Shion this. I want us to be twins again in the next life. Go on! Shion screams and tells Keiji to go down. Please don't die, Shion. He doesn't understand why Shion said to tell Shion. But she asked him, so he must convey that message. Otherwise, something terrible really happens. Shion's message won't reach Mion. Please don't die, Shion. Or Kasai. An explosion shakes the air. Something was thrown in from the torture room. The explosion from that and the noise from Kasai's machine guns sound at the same time. Go, Keiichi! The noise echoes in the cave. All Keiichi can do now is to go down the ladder, grieving over his powerlessness in tears. The violent flashes of light burn into his retinas. Go, Keiichi! Mion screams from below. As Keiichi goes down, he screams to the top, too. Gwisuan! They attacked us! The enemies are trying to stop us from the huge cave on the other side of the room. Torture room. There are two fu muzzle flashes, probably AKs. Whoever it is, he's a professional. We're truly one. Give us an order. <laughs> there we go. Our opponent is a professional. Don't go in unless you graduated from the killing house. Iguisu 1, 2, Otori 7, 8. Get ready to move in. How many firearms do we have? Oh boy. We have four MP5s and plenty of grenades. We can't trust our bulletproof shields, so we abandoned them. There's a flashlight on the right next to the entrance. I'm assuming they don't have a device to see in the dark. Iguisu 1 here. We're going in. Throw in some grenades when I give you the signal. Oh god. While the enemies are quiet, Kasai changes the magazine. Shion-san, that's enough. Please go. If I go, they will all fire at you while you change the magazine. You can't do it by yourself. There's a contradiction in what Shion just said. According to her theory, the last two will never escape. Mion keeps shouting from the horizontal tunnel. Please go, Shion. Damn it, Shion! Hurry up and come down! Everyone knows it's not safe to stay there. But nobody can stop Mion from screaming. Mion and I will wait for Xi'an here. Rena, why don't you take everyone else and run to the hills? Oh, okay. No, I don't want to lose anyone. Rika. This is the final world. There is no more starting over. I don't want either Xi'an or Kasai to die. I don't want a future like that. I know we can't redo it, so no, I don't want it. Xi'an, please come down. Oh, God. We see a violent flash and hear a roar. Oh, no. No. And they hear explosive sounds. They sound different from the machine guns Sh Shion and Kasai have. They also hear a tinkling sound, which may be the sound of bullet shells. They can't see anything other than the flashing lights. They hear the sound. When everything stops. Oh, no. After a little silence, footsteps that don't belong to Shion or Kasai gather at the top of the well. They can hear hard-soled shoes kicking the bullet shells as they walk. It's clear. A greasy wonder, a toady one. We've secured the loopholes. The voice echoes down the well, and me and the others hear it too. They don't know how to react. Some become speechless, some start to cry. Some let out a wordless scream. They look up at the tunnel as they wait for Shion and Kasai to come down, but there's no sign of them. Bright beam light shines from the top of the well. Irie grabs Mion and Keiichi's collars and pulls them back, but they can see in the dark. They may already know Keiichi and the others are hiding in this horizontal tunnel. Roger, we'll try. Can you hear? You'll need to reply, just listen. A guy shouts from the top of the well. We want the Queen Carrier, Furude Rika, and Director Irie Kiosuke. You are misunderstanding us. We are here to eradicate a special local disease. What's happening right now is because we suspect the director's involvement in a conspiracy. 
You have nothing to do with this. Turn them over to us. They already turned all the flashlights off, so nobody can tell what kind of expressions are on each other's faces. Mion's expression becomes distorted. That's why nobody can stop her from screaming. You murderer! You killed Xion! Oh, are you talking about this girl? Don't worry. She's still alive. She's just unconscious. She's alive! She's alive, Mi-chan! Mion knows that and doesn't make any difference in this situation. Same with this guy. He's alive. But if we don't refuse to turn them over to us, we have to use them both as bargaining chips. What are you going to do to them? They're in a torture room. As Mion looks up to the top of the braille, in the dark, it suddenly becomes bright and she sees something unbelievable. Oh, no. Xion is unconscious and one of the other guys is holding her. He's basically sticking her body out over the edge of the well. If the guy lets go of Xion, she will fall down the well. They don't know how far it is to the bottom. She will not survive. Sh Xion. Xion doesn't reply, but she moves just a little. She is alive. She's alive, at least for now. No, no way. They won't push her off. Huh? What are you saying? They can easily kill a hostage if they have more than one. They have Xion and Kasai's, huh? We will push Xion off and just ask the same question again. He means it. Mion lashes out fiercely at Keiichi. Keiichi regrets saying what he said. I'll give you a little time to think. After 60 seconds, the first hostage will go down. Think carefully and make up your mind. What should we do? Mion is hysteric. They want me. Let them think Riga-chan has already escaped. I'll go. They should be satisfied with just me. That sounds like a great idea at first, as it would do the least damage, but Rena speaks quietly. No. Shichan and Kasai-san risked their lives to gain time so we could escape. If you went back, what they did would be wasted. Then what do you suggest we do? Are you saying we should let Shion die? Are you saying you don't care if Shion dies? Damn you! Mion, please. Please stop, mion -san. I don't know what to do either, because Xion san is my name. Oh, 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 oh. Mion starts to cry as she holds Sadako's head. The beam of light of the mountain hound shines into the horizontal tunnel. Their eyes are used to the darkness, so even with the little light, they can kind of see each other. But, so what? This is a desperate situation. Mion and Sadako continue to cry. Rena bites her lower lip, trying to hold her emotions, and Irie looks down. Rika-chan and Hanyu are restless. What do we do, Hanyu? I don't know what to do. I don't know either. Hey, you are a god, aren't you? Do something. Do something! Use your psychic ability to knock the enemies down. Help Xion. Only a miracle can save her. Then make a miracle happen as a god! Slap. They hear a strange sound. Everyone is surprised. Hanyu just slapped Rika's face. Rika, listen. Hanyu? We both have experienced many worlds, and we have learned much. Sometimes you learned, and sometimes I learned. And we've learned so many important things, and now in this world, we've learned the most important thing. Something we've been pursuing, something we finally got. Do you know what that is? Hmm. It's how to make a miracle happen. A miracle is like a number you get and die. People think that the result of the roll depends on the god's mood. God holds the key to miracles. Humans don't have a right to control them. Although humans don't have the right, they can perceive. They perceive how they can prove the odds, and how they can make a miracle happen. How to make a miracle happen. Rika, you should already know. You learned it before I did. This world is precious to you. Why don't you try it in this final world? Ah. Mika's mouth opens. There she goes again. She has forgotten how to make a miracle happen. You go ahead and escape. Rika stands up. 
Everyone is surprised at what she said. Ilie, take them. I will go out there. Takano means to kill us both, but she wants to kill me in a certain way. That's why she won't kill me for a while. Are you kidding? You'll be dead anyway. If I don't go, she and Kasai will be killed. I'll let them capture me. Taimu will take Takano to kill me and give you a chance to counterattack. Hey, Rika-chan! This is the only way, isn't it? It's so simple. As she speaks, Rika steps out of the horizontal tunnel and reaches the ladder. The beam of light shines on her. In this darkness, she looks almost holy. Because we all believe we can win. You, me, and even God believe in it. This is nothing. Nita? <clears throat> Rika's smile tells them that she trusts them 100%. She believes someone will come rescue her before she gets killed. That's why she doesn't mind letting the enemy capture her now. She's saying that if it will save Xion and Kasai's lives, then that's nothing. I'm coming up right now. Pull Xion back, okay? The mountain hounds pull Xion's body away from the edge of the well. If you even think of touching my friends, I'll bite my tongue and kill myself. Takana wants to kill me herself, so if that happens, you'll be in big trouble, okay? All right, all right. Come on up. Let all of my friends go. According to your plan, they will all die anyway. No, we can't do that. We won't kill them, but we have to restrain them. Well then, maybe it's quicker to just let go of the ladder here than to bite my tongue. This is a very deep well. If you can't find my body, that will be a problem too, right? Oh, Rika. As long as they capture Rika, the Mountain Hounds really don't care about the other. They were ready to kill the rest if they resisted once they had Rika. That's why they won't agree to Rika's request. They start to think that maybe they should just lie to Rika. That's when they hear something. Ooh! Look at those eyes! Look at those eyes! Look at that face! Hanyu starts to speak with a clear voice. Her voice is such a mysterious tone. It sounds like it's coming from below the surface of the earth, but also it sounds like it's coming from heaven. Hanyu speaks. I am saying I accept the deal. My servants, do as I say. Hmm? Furune Rika is coming up. You will fulfill her little request. Heaven will not give to those who aren't willing to give themselves. It's not necessary for humans to think too much. Know your own abilities. Hmm. Agrisu-1, the member who has been demanding their surrender, is suddenly overcome by a strange sensation. He is in an advantageous position, as it doesn't seem that way anymore. And this girl's voice, there's something strange about it. Her voice has something that's holy and sacred. He instinctively senses it. Humans can only negotiate with humans. Humans are not allowed to negotiate with anything that's above them. Wait. I'll check with the commander. Wait a minute. Uguisi went to a Tori one. The guy was feisty until just a minute ago, but he is completely perplexed now. Everyone is stunned by Rika and Hanyu's mysterious auras. We, we will come rescue right, you right away, okay? Rena mutters as she tries to hold back her tears. Okay, we'll accept your request. We'll let everyone else go. Fure Rika, you come up. Major Takano says there's something she wants to talk to you about. Okay, I'm going. Nikpa? She fades out. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Boy, we've been looking for you, Rika-san. You're such an important person. You can't just disappear like that, you know? That's against the rules. Me. Mikasan, we'll take you to the clinic. Everyone else is free to go. And the assault unit that led Rika away goes back to the basement. They're about to break the rules, too. You aren't going to keep the promise, are you? A promise? What are you talking about? <laughs> I hope you get fucking smited. <sighs> wow! We don't want you to bite your tongue. Hey! As Rika tries to run, Okunogi grabs her fragile arm. 
fights back, but her resistance means nothing. One of the members takes out a syringe from a case. It shouldn't kill her, but it probably will put Rika to sleep. What Takano needs isn't a chatty Rika. She only needs a live queen carrier. If she gets that shot, that will be the end of this world. Mm. Before Rika can scream, the other member covers her mouth. Mm. Mm. Hurry up, give her the shot. The member, with, the member with the syringe comes closer to Rika's arm. Rika's being grabbed from behind and her mouth is covered. There's no way for her to fight. Akasaka? She keeps re repeating in her mind, I believe. Even when I'm asleep, I believe. She believes someone will wake her up. And the first thing she sees when she opens her eyes will be her beloved friends. Mm hmm? But then it occurred all of a sudden. The guy with the syringe spins twice in the air and drops to the ground! Nobody, including Okunogi, can understand this sudden phenomenon. It defies the law of gravity. Rika can't understand either. The guy who was holding Rika from behind speaks up. I made it. The voice has such a heavy tone to it. I regretted it in countless worlds. Whenever I realized it, it was too late. Wh who are you? The others take a few steps back, away from Rika and the guy who's holding her. There are many units within the mountain hounds, so usually its members don't remember each other's faces. There were just too many units all mixed in, so nobody really paid attention. All of the mountain hounds' members are more or less well-built, but this guy has an excellent physique. Even Okunogi realized he never saw someone like this in his unit. He actually wanted him in his unit, but, but, this is what I've been longing to tell you all this time. Ah, ah, Rika-chan, I came to help you! Akasaka!